You got to go through some things. Yes. You got to suffer some things. Yes. You have to be denied some things yes. to learn how to lean. Yes. I'm dependent on Jesus. Amen. 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 We're here for the homegrown celebration of the day of Robert, Roger Mazel, a brother, a friend, a worker, and the vineyard of God. Yeah. This is a celebration. Yeah. Let's give God some This is a celebration. Amen. He lived his life. He served well. Amen. And now we come to say goodbye. For so long, we'll see you later. Amen. We now have scripture, Old Testament, by Daniel Say Chan. New Testament by David, David Lowe, and Prayer of Comfort by David A. Chan. In that old world reading. Let's give God some praise.
Father, we thank you for this family. Father, we ask our best upon them. Give them strength, courage to go through what they're faced with. God, only you can do that. Comfort each and every one as they each one need different comfort. Father, we ask you to do that at this time. Father in heaven, Lord, we just want to give you thanks. Father, we just want to give you thanks. Father, we just want to give you thanks. Father, it could have been the other way. Yes. It could have been one of us that we praying over. But Father, you saw that we this time was his. But we what you allow us to be here to witness and give you praise for what you had already done. Lord, we just thank you for all of that. Father, as our pastor come forth with the word, Father, we pray that you give him, uh, give him a word that we all can feast on. And Lord, we pray that someone would want to be changed their life and become and get saved under the anointing of you. Father, Father, we thank you for that. Father, we thank you because you have been good to all of us. Yes, yes sir. Father, we thank you. Thank you. Father, we just thank you. Thank you. I have a, in my heart, I just feel praise. Lord, mm -hmm. we just thank you. Thank you. Because uh, I know how deep my eyes there used to do. Mm -hmm. Lord, when the spirit touch him, mm -hmm. Father, you look at the head, yes, he, he'd be giving you praise. Yes, Father, we want to leave here today giving you praise for you. A word of all praise and honor. We thank you for this family and for all those visits that came. We ask all these blessings in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
privilege for me to stand here before you today to speak a few remarks about Deacon Mizell. I have three topics I need to touch on. When we were building the church, when he came in, at the time he was called my trustee, he's a trustee. I don't know how to drive no nail. I don't know how to measure no boat. So whatever you need me to do, I'll be right with you. One thing I can say, my Deacon Mizell has stood with me to finish the church. Amen. If I need him to do to do so, go out on the doors, uh, pick up stuff, or just be there so I wouldn't be by myself. Uh, I could count on him 100%. That, that part on the church. The next part that I want to touch on is uh, when uh, Deacon David and myself was uh, ordained to be He made sure that he told us how things supposed to go. One of the things you always know, stress the foot was in one time you wear black. And during the summer and spring, we wear white. He said, don't come in here. In the winter time, we wear white. white. <laughs> somebody to teach you the way it's supposed to be. Because uh, he, uh, I want, when I get to my last point, I'm going to let you know why I said this. Because a lot of times we do things and what we have seen someone else do, mm -hmm. and they don't be right. So the last point I'm going to touch on about Dick Mizell, with one favorite word he always said around us, don't you never Never assume nothing. He said, always make sure you know before you start assuming. And he, now he stressed that a lot to me. So family, look up. You know where your help comes from. You know who you serve. So his time, this time, could be our time next time. But we all know that all of us going to leave here. So I'm saying, be encouraged. Put your trust in God. Amen. Give honor to God. Pastor Walsh, all the other pastors, preachers, everybody to the family. We thank and praise God and for the time that we knew Deacon Mizell. And I know that Deacon Mizell, he loved Bell Mountain. He loved his pastor. But one thing I knew, there was a place where Christ Temple was in his heart all the time. He yeah. thank and praise God for the time he made. He worked with us, served with Christ Temple. Bell Mount was number one, but Christ Temple was number two. <laughs> amen. He was right there. You see something, amen, that, that was out of order or something, amen, that didn't agree with him. Amen. We thank and praise God. He would call us, amen, call us the men. Amen. And he was there. Amen. He wasn't just sitting on the sideline. Amen. He was there to help. And he did it well. We thank God for him. Amen. Thank God, amen, for the family that asked me. Amen. He just speak on the behalf of Christ Temple. But also can speak on the behalf of the person that knows. Amen. That they love. Amen. And the wisdom that this man had. Amen. And anybody, amen, that was around him, amen, I'm sure you can touch. Amen, and, uh, and he'll help you along the way. Yeah. And I just jotted down about two or three things, things by the time we forget to see it all. But think about Bill was a man that had class. Yeah. Amen. He had class about himself. Think yeah. about Bill was a man of integrity. And one thing I know about Think about Bill, he was faithful. Yeah. If he said he would do something, he did it. Yeah. And he did it well. And then, uh, I'm so glad I didn't have to wait to the day to tell him thank you because mm -hmm. all through the years I would tell him thank you. But every time I tell him thank you, he would say these words, I'm just a servant. Mm -hmm. And I'm just a servant. Mm -hmm. I'm here to help. And truly he did that. He said, then man, pray his will. 
Amen. And I found out that he was a man that loved the Lord and he loved people. Amen. He also encouraged the choir and encouraged one another. And I was glad to see him. Amen. And he grabbed up. Amen. Especially, amen, in that Cadillac. <laughs> amen. See him step out. Amen. With his head up high. Amen. 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 He knew he knew what that was to him. And we all have something, amen, to thank God for in the one that the Lord has put in our life. Amen. And the Friday, amen, before the Lord called him home, when I saw him in the hospital, amen, there with Vernon and the wife, amen, and, and the rest of the family, amen, I saw him, amen, uh, uh, as a fighter. Amen, he kept calling Vernon, amen, and take Vernon by the hand and stand up. You know, stand up. <laughs> Sit back down, give him a sip of water, stand up again. <laughs> this man is right. He said, I want to go home. Amen. He didn't go home on this side. Yeah. But he going to a, a, a greater place. Yeah. And I remember, I remember that while I'm leaving there, that I shook hand, he looked me in the eye, and he still had that firm handshake. Mind is as sharp as ever. So I will never forget, amen, Deacon Mazel, in the life of the legacy, not only he lived in the community, here at Bellmouth, but we left with Christ Temple. Thank you, Pastor Watts. Amen. Because they made me work together. Thank you, family. Amen. For allowing him to be there with us. And we would never forget you. Amen. Be encouraged. We have no doubt that God will see you through. We love you. Today we mourn this man who is a great man, one of his best gentlemen ever come to the building here. Mm -hmm. His life, his life showed him. He left a legacy of that. All the old people, the young people, everybody was crazy about right. And I just found out just uh, this week when I talked to Mary, the first thing of the parent, first we all called him Roger over the time, and she said, uh, uh, the teacher's called him Roger. Everybody's calling him Roger, so that's what we call him. But I didn't know the person. <laughs> so, but anyway, uh, feel a little ill. That's what the little woman to say a little something about. Now, I was born on March, uh, March 24th. Was okay. I was born on that farm. There was a lot of changes made in the 50s and the uh, 60s, especially the early 60s. I left in 1961. But let me give you a little description of it right quick, okay? The federal census people, they call it Carolina Township. Everybody going to know that, okay? Carolina Township. We call it the hill when we ran into people up town in Roxville and so forth. Or we call it on the farm. They say, where are you from? We're from the farm. We're from the hill, hill. We're from the blunt farm because we split up in two places. The blunt farm and the bell little farm. And that male little farm, this Clinton Carr, was the first black uh, overseer of that farm. Matter of fact, he was on one had a telephone in the first He would send people down to your house and say, Well, you got a phone call from New York. And he'd run down to New York. So he was 
that black overseer there on Bill O'Neill. Did it start out as a dirt road? No electricity. Back of barns all along the road, everywhere. And uh, to me and they would use these old lanterns walking down the road, look like ghosts. Let's take a look at them right quick. All they were looked like slaves. Mm -hmm. They didn't have any paint on them. They all had tin tops. Mm -hmm. You know, outside everybody had a black white pot. That black pot was used on some everything. They washed the clothes. Mm -hmm. Made the chicken to kill all the <laughs> So we had water wells, smokehouse, hog pen, chicken coops. Corn corn, good pie, they want that garden. And the people they bragged about who got the best collar, cabbage, etc. Let's take a look at on the inside of the house. I said it looked like slave quarter, right? Everybody had kerosene lamp, number 10 heater, and sometimes those heater, they had a, they were made out of this hard uh, metal, and you could cook on the heater. As we like to go in, in, in the kitchen. That's, that's the way we live. Okay. And everybody has a no limb on their floor. Mm -hmm. and that's all we have. Those types of houses. The families don't get a little here. That was about a, about a dozen, maybe 12 or 13. And black people, we, we had about 100 black people. 97 to be exact. From the children all the way up to the elders. About 97. Only one white family on that farm. It was split into two. Like I said, the blunt farm and the male little farm. The largest family on that farm was old man, uh, Uncle Bill was little. Uh, married my grandmother, Hattie High Smith, little. And there were three sets of little. There was old man Will Little, and Bessie Little, and some Chester and Nathan Little, and then my Uncle Bill. There were cars, expensive cars. Andrew, William and Andrew were my parents on my mother's side. I Smith, my Zell, the comments, oh. and the snacks. Okay. Those were the people that we had. Every one of them was in the They worked together back then. The kids were so real strong. They raised their children together. They put their children together. <laughs> children raised in the children. Now, church and worship. These people, they worship God together every chance they get. They show it. Okay, they work and uh, serve each other at Old Wind Chapel. We walk to Christ Temple. We have uh, memberships at a Gold Point. And here at Bell Mountain, uh, St. John uh, uh, at, at Stokes. And they had prayer services about every Wednesday night in somebody's home. All that stuff was different than that. The women, they can vegetables and fruit. They're changing up. They made quilts out of old clothes and cotton. They had scalpels in their rooms and couldn't even get any in the house. And they made that little box my son. Now we had manners. We got crammed manners. Every time we walked down the road, I don't care how many times, we had to say, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, yes, sir, no, sir, wrong person. We were elders first. We were taught to say, please, excuse me, and thank you. Tell you what, at this point we got, we had to take it to the schoolhouse. And everywhere we went, uptown, Robertsville, everywhere. And our discipline went like this. It started off, the old person gave you that special blue. Freed you in your <laughs> After that special look, it was upgraded to what we call a good talking to. <laughs> After that good talking to, you get that spanking. <laughs> That you got to switch. Mm -hmm. Now the little leg. Mm -hmm. And the heaven 
discipline just when they came. In every house, there was a strap. There was a groove. And there was a belt. And they were sure clear. There was no such thing now.
mother, Ellie Winkler. Uh, Uncle Roger was uh, the youngest boy out of five, so you know he was four to the chief. <laughs> he was. Uh, of course, you heard the name Percy Roger Brazil. And uh, but Aunt Darlene would affectionately call him Roy. <laughs> so then it starts picking up other people start calling him Roy too. Uncle Roger was an excellent husband, father, uncle, and deacon. But one of the things that some of you have kind of mentioned was he was a great teacher. A guy that didn't graduate uh, high school, uh, didn't go to technical school. Uncle Roy got his um, farm, and then he went in the military, and he went to Danbury, and I'm telling you, he turned Danbury inside out. <laughs> Bernie's being nice, he turned it inside out. <laughs> you know, Darlene, uh, there's a little joke that we have. He said, Jabo, how are you? Birthday, January 1957. He said, Then I know how old you are. He said, How long I've been married. <laughs> Darlene and I got married 26th of December, same year. <laughs> so he's not Darlene, you know, about that. Uncle Roger also, you can see, served in the Korean War. Uncle Dave, right there, you see that warrior right there, was a Vietnam veteran. But how many Korean veterans can we say of what? Yeah. Well, took care of himself. Uh, and he's always teasing. I said, Roy, how do you like career? He said, nephew, that's the coldest place I've been in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Roger was a person that you could call. And all of us in this world, he said, who can I call to ask a question to? I called him, and he gave me, as all of you all have said before me, y'all pretty much took my stuff away from the <laughs> And I'm glad that showed you what? We all think the same thing. Uncle Roger would just run it down to you. He said, invest in some a house or whatever, or school. He always had time. And let's face it, there's not a whole lot of people in this world where we can go to yeah. and feel comfortable about it. What? And not here the day of tomorrow. Things that we would go over and do. Um, to our darling, Bernie, Wanda, Hattie, and Greg. Y'all going to be all right? Pastor Watt, and the bell my crowd, going to take care of you. Remember, three months ago, we London out in the same situation. And they have called and texted. And when you're at your worst moment, somebody call you a text. Wake up in the morning crying. Don't worry about it. That's a part of it. That's the love that you have for them and the love that they have for you. And so with that, I say that right now, I'm just calling on every morning. Sometimes I got to call them on. Come on, go. Well, I called this afternoon. Bernie, don't worry about it. It's going to come. Juan, it's going to come. Ed, it's going to come. Greg, my darling, it's going to come. Now, I saw something here that showed me how right I was. I wrote this little note last night. And you always sing it on Roy and Dave's song. My darling took a little brother. What did her baby sister do? Come right up here and grab her sister like she's supposed to. She wasn't worried about what anybody thought. She came what? Grab her baby sister like she's supposed to. Grab her baby sister like she's supposed to. We're going to take this here. We got nieces and nephews. And I ask that all of y'all, nieces and nephews, call cats just to. And that'll, that, 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 that'll bring us all on. Well, the last thing I'm going to say is I'm probably going to always say don't work hard or work what? Smart. Smart. <laughs> anyway, I'm, I'm going to say this one here. Well, when they were on the farm, you know, everything was done with mules. And you know you're pulling behind that plow. So Bernie knows a little joke. Okay, that's right, that's what it was, to work with music. So Daddy and Uncle Baby, and Uncle Duck, Bill and Hill Crowd, y'all remember them names? Baby and Uncle Duck and all of them, Daddy, they'd be holding that plow, holding that plow. Uncle Roy would take a wrench and what? Balance that plow so the plow would go on work and not him. <laughs> <laughs> he said, ain't thinking about Roy. So the next day, guess what Daddy did? He gonna get on Roy's plow and use his plow. All right, the herb brother, let me sit you down and show you how to down. <laughs>
family and church family of Ethan Percy Roger Mazel. Church resolution of respect. We, the entire membership of Christ Temple Missionary Baptist Church, extends to you our heartfelt sympathy and the loss of your loved one, Ethan Percy Roger Mazel. For Ed, in the providence of God, has brought to a close the life of your loved one. According to his kingdom, God, who is infinite in his wisdom, makes no mistake. God knows each one of his children and knows how much we can be. For Ed, he can, my dear, was a faithful servant who loved the Lord and and our church, Christ's Temple. We were fortunate to have Mr. Mizell to assist us as we borrowed him from Belmont Church with the respect, blessings, and love from Pastor Wallace. Mr. Mizell performed several classes within the church faithfully. We enjoyed his presence as we considered him one of our own, and we will never forget his many years of service to us. Whereas we will remember him as a Christian servant, having a willingness to serve the essence of a Christ-changed life with humility and servitude, which honestly reflects Jesus Christ and blesses others. He took the title of deaconship seriously, and it was demonstrated through his works. Being in resolve, our condolences extends to his family and church family, as we believe that the memories of our beloved deacon will provide comfort and solace in this time of bereavement. God has spoken. Thy will be done. The burdens that seem too heavy to bear are lifted away on the wings of the prayer. Be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution will be given to the family, a copy to Belmont Missionary Baptist Church, and a copy placed in Christ Temple's church files for record keeping. Proudly submitted, Christ Temple Missionary Baptist Church family to Dr. Russell Robinson, Senior Pastor. Thank you. Thanks be to God. What a wonderful guy that he is. And that he is to us. Amen. And acknowledgments that cars are numerous. And even though we would want to hear everyone read, we won't be able to do it today. Because they were sent to the family. And they will read them in the days that are to come. But we will have just a few we would like to read. There is a tender touch of the Lord for us at times of loss. It's a touch that gently wipes our tears and brings comfort in sorrow. From James and Jeremy Worthington from Dover, Delaware. And as long as their memories, love lives on. And from William and Mary Smith of Danbury, Connecticut, praying for you and your lost memories of gifts, our hearts receive to bring gentle comfort as we grieve. With the deepest sympathy, Pastor Gregory B. Grat and St. John Church family. Remembering their beautiful song. God gives every person their own unique song. It's one that will play their entire life long. Through the love that they give and the gifts that they share, through the memories they make and the dreams that they dare. Belmont Church family, Reverend Robert Watts, pastor, Evangelist Faye Chance, church clerk, officers, and members. May the love of God give you peace. May the caring of friends give you comfort. With our sincere condolences to you on the loss of your loved one.
Del Mar Church family, Reverend Watts, pastor. We don't always understand life's plans, but you can be sure of all the love surrounding you now, all the hope and support here for you. The Lord is your strength, Pastor Russell and Evangelist Shirley Watts. Sometimes life is hard to find out. Challenges and obstacles arise that were never in our plans. Yet, God is always there to take us by the hand, walk with us step by step, and guide us through to the good he has for our lives. May my thoughts and prayers are with you at this time, and may God give you strength to endure today and the days to come. God bless you, Nathan. Danbury, Connecticut. And again, these cards are to the family. And they will read them. They will acknowledge you. Continue to be in prayer with and for the family. Periodically, give them a phone call. And it will be good to hear your call. Obituary. The late Mr. Joseph Henderson and Ms. Connie Moore Lafayette. Open their hearts and home as they will from their youngest son, Percy Rogers, on October 2nd, 1933. He transitioned to his final destination on Thursday, March 9, 2023, surrounded by his loving family. Deacon Mazel joined Belmont Missionary Baptist Church at an early age. And after his formal education, he answered his calling to join the United States Army, where he served in the Korean War. Ending his bout with the military, he met and married the love of his life, Mother Darlene Lou. Eventually, the couple yearned for a better, more productive life and decided to depart to Danbury, Connecticut. Deacon Mazzella was employed by the Public Foil Metal Fabrication Incorporated and became an inspirational and dedicated deacon at New Hope Baptist Church in Danbury, Connecticut. Eventually, the family decided to retire back to North Carolina with family in tow and rejoined Belmont Missionary Baptist Church and began working for the Lord. Deacon Mazel also aided and helped guide Christ Temple Missionary Baptist Church family under the leadership of Reverend Russell Robertson. Deacon Mazel conveyed the love of God financial literacy, and maintained strong family values to his loved ones. Deacon Mazel was preceded in death by his family, by his parents, Mr. and Mrs. Joseph H. Mazel, a son, Charles Moore, siblings, Lester, James, Booker T., John Aaron, Shirley M. Watford, and Mother Adeline M. Carr. Deacon Mazel leaves to celebrate his life his loving and supportive wife, Mother Darling Little Mazel, two sons, Bernard A. Mazel of Silver Springs, Maryland, Gregory E. Mazel of the home, two daughters, Hattie Washington of Greenville, North Carolina, and Wanda Everett Chance of Stone Mountain, Georgia, his only surviving sibling, Mary M. Williams, husband David Sr. of Stanford, North Carolina, three brothers-in-law, Willis Reed Little, Ben Chance, and Otis Little, three sisters-in-law, Annie Wallace, Alma Scott, and Peggy Chance, a host of grandchildren, great-grandchildren, nephews, nieces, cousins, and friends to celebrate his life. And I want to say, when tomorrow starts without me, it's also in the resolution for Belmont Baptist Church. And I have it. That's in my study. But when tomorrow starts without me. When tomorrow starts without me, please try and understand that an angel came and called my name and took me by the hand. The angel said, my place is ready and heaven far above, and that I have to leave behind all those I dearly love. But when I walked through heaven's gates, I felt so much at home, 
But God looked down, smiled at me, and told me, welcome home. So when tomorrow starts without me, don't think we're far apart. For every time you think of me, I'm right here in your heart. Acknowledgement, we sincerely thank you for your thoughts, prayers, gifts, cards, and every kind expression of sympathy that you have shown the family. Please know that your gestures will not be forgotten and will forever be in our hearts. We thank you for being a part of our loved one's journey here on earth. We pass will be immediately followed the internment. Please fellowship with the family at the church. And after the preaching, the eulogy today, we'll read Belmont's resolution.
person born into the world, praise the Lord, you don't have to prepare yourself to go to hell. You know, people don't people don't want to, they're trying to rule that that word out of the church. But there's two places in both start with age. One is heaven and one is hell. You have to prepare yourself. You know, I, I wouldn't be under a pastor if he didn't tell me something about hell every night. Because this is what we're living for. Yes. To live again. Yes. Yes. And we're going to live again whether we are saved or not. For a Christian, you know, the Bible says, after from the body, present with the Lord. Yes. But they're not so with an unsaved person. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. 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 I mean, we don't, we, we don't, we don't have to get involved in a whole lot of that, but hey, you got to prepare yourself. Yes. Yes. It's like I was preparing myself to come here today. I had to put everything in order. Yes. Uh huh. I thought about that thing. Mm -hmm. We had to prepare ourselves to meet the Lord. Yes. Yes. Amen. Because yes. He's coming for people that have prepared themselves. Yes. Yes. Okay, who we are. Yes. A revelation says I saw the dead stand before God, small and great. Mm -hmm. Big shot, little shots. Reach hope. Yes. Come on now. Yes. Pray yes. the Lord. I have, a, I have a thought here, praise the Lord. The thought been ringing with me every, for a while. And it is the calm before the storm. All right. The calm before the storm. Enjoy the moment. The calm before the storm. Enjoy the moment. And when the thought came to me, the guy gave me a scripture, gave me a scripture with Jesus and his disciples. Mm -hmm. Amen. In the fourth chapter of Mark, around about the 35th verse, through the 41st verse, Jesus said unto his disciples, Let us go over. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Deacon Isaiah. Knew one day he was going to go over. Not under, but over. I don't want to go under. I want to go over. See the hands of those that want to go over. Where Jesus is at. Amen. So Jesus and his disciples, he, he, he said unto him, he was finishing his work, praise the Lord. Jesus was always about his father's business. Amen. There won't no slow foot in him. Right. <laughs> won't no doubt in him. Everything was positive. And he was on the move because he knew that uh, his father sent him on this earth to do a work. Yeah. And that work was to seek and to save that which was lost. Yeah. I don't care how, how we get in, in, in the world. I don't care what God bring us to. Yeah. I, I don't care if God make us a bishop or whatever God make us. Praise the Lord. We have to preach God's word. We came to seek and to save that which was lost. He came as the king of the Jews. Okay. So, you know, a king? You mean to tell me a king come looking like that? Riding on a donkey's back? You know, you were looking for a king to come royal. Amen. Dressed down with silk and stuff. That's why they couldn't receive him. Amen. Because he didn't come like that. He came low and he came on. Amen. Somebody tell the Lord thank you. So he tells his disciples, let us go over to the other side. It was the work that we were on the other side. Everything was calm. You better enjoy the moments when it's calm in your life. Because you can rest the show a storm. Help me today, Lord. Help me today. I was sitting there, my eyes were full of water. I said, Lord, I need your help. And that's what the Holy Ghost came for, to help us. It was a calm. Jesus was kind of tired from his journey. The Bible said that he went into the ship after this in the way the mother to the, and, and went down and thought rest and sleep. All at once. The Bible said that great storm of wind came. Yeah. <laughs> A great storm of wind came. 
name. Satan always tries to uh, throw God's people. But you got to keep in mind what God had told him. He said, we're going over. Amen. To the other side. Thank you, Jesus. Isaiah, Isaiah had that in his mind. Regardless of whatever I have to go through with, I'm going over. Storm came up. <laughs> Jesus, didn't Jesus tell them in the, in the 16th chapter of John and around the 33rd verse, he said, in this world, you're going to have trials and tribulations, but in me, you're going to have peace. He said, be a good cheer, I have overcome. That's what you serve, the overcome. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go over. Storm came up. Wind began to blow. Water began to beat into the boat. Disciples holding on for dear life. Yes, sir. That's, sir. That's how we are sometimes when fear attacks us. Amen. Well, I'm talking about folks that are saved now. Amen. Uh, you, you look for the world. Amen. To be, a be frightened and scared. But I'm talking about the church. You know, who chose the disciples. He chose us from the foundation. He chose us, praise the Lord. But look at the disciples holding on. Holding on. I don't know what kind of conversation they had, praise the Lord. But I know they had one, praise the Lord. Somebody re reminded uh, that when Jesus is on board. But the conversation they had before, I don't know. I don't know if they told one another, sir. Are we going to drown? I don't know how to swim. And we need some help. God is our present help. Yes. In the time of trouble. Yes. Enjoy the moment. Yes. We have to enjoy the moment. Yes. I said to myself sometimes, praise the Lord, when I get to begin, begin feeling good, you know how I mean? sometimes we feel real nice and no, no, no pains in your body. You just feel good. And, and, and the flesh is start talking and say, say you better watch out now when you start feeling good like that, something gonna happen. <laughs> but you know what I started saying? I'm gonna enjoy the moment. I'm gonna enjoy the moment. See, this is what folks don't do for a lot of time people gonna do. We worry about tomorrow. Yeah. Amen. We don't we worry about yesterday, we worry about tomorrow, but we're not enjoying today. Enjoy the moment. Yeah. Because a storm, a storm is gonna come. Huh? Rejoice when you when you fall into diamond's temptation. It didn't say rejoice if you fall, it said when you fall, because we are fall. But we have a God that will pick us up. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, so praise the Lord. Amen. It was all and for dear life. And one of the disciples said, Jesus is humble. Hallelujah. Then they go down and wake him up. Wouldn't he let the man rest? Go down and wake him up and ask him a question. Say, Carry thou not that we perish? Why are we going to utter that out of our mouth, praise the Lord, when Jesus cared? He cared so much for us. And he left his home to go. Came down here to help us. Carry thou not that we perish. Jesus got up. You know how it is when you sleep, you get up, you yawn, you stretch. I can imagine, praise the Lord, that he got up and he stretched and he yawned. Amen. And he went out. Top of the boat. They went out to the pit and they looked around. Hallelujah. Yeah, 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 yeah. A storm was just acting up. Waves. You ever, you, ever, you ever been fishing up? You ever been on the sea, praise the Lord, and see those waves? My God. We in his in But Jesus, the Lamb of God. Yeah. Somebody tell the Lord that. When you see that, praise the Lord. The Bible said that he rebuked the wind. Yeah. No use of saying nothing to the sea. Go to the source. He rebuked the wind. Yeah. And said unto the sea, Peace be still. Come on, somebody tell the Lord that. Lord. Amen. That's who I, I, I enjoy serving. 
when trial and tribulation come my way, praise the Lord, that I know I'm serving a God that is able to speak peace into my life. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. Oh, I'm getting ready to get out your way now, praise the Lord. The God that we serve is good. And he's worthy of all praise. He, he, he does just what he said he can do. The Bible said he was the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Amen. He is a healer. I don't care what the devil says. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. swallow, he couldn't eat. Yeah. So I said, let's have some prayer. Yeah. Yeah. So I laid my hands on the throat. Uh -huh. the Lord. And then I, 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 when I went back, his son said, show me the picture. Uh -huh. So he was walking yeah. uh -huh. and he, he, he ate all his food.
You need healing for your body. All you got to do is ask him. He's a healer. He's a doctor. Never lost a patient. Never lost him. Come on, y'all. Yeah. Only thing he wants you to do is your trust him. Thank you. 